Hello and welcome to chapter 1.6 from Stevens' Matrices, Vectors, and 3D Math. In this chapter we're going to talk about a change of basis. And I discussed a motivation for such a change of basis back in chapter 1.4, but we will revisit it here right after I put this into full screen mode. Okay, so here's our motivation. Suppose we had a character or an object in three space. We'll make it a character. And it was interacting with, with its outside world, either within you know some sort of model of the real world or, or an animation on, on a computer screen. It will interact with other objects. It will bump into other objects. Other objects will hit it. And what you want to know is when this happens. When, do, when does this thing hit other things? And so to make this a little easier, we can encapsulate our character in an ellipsoid and then just determine whether or not this ellipsoid has been hit by anything or runs into anything or bumps into anything. Um, but that's not exactly that helpful because while it does it, it gets rid of the complicated geometry of say a human or you know an airplane or, or some other object that has a complex geometry it's still an ellipsoid and determining whether or not this point Suppose we have this point is inside the ellipsoid or not, right? It, it's obviously when you look at it, it's, it's easy to tell. But from a computational perspective, if you just have these numbers and the description of this ellipsoid, it's not completely trivial to determine whether or not that point is in the ellipsoid. If, on the other hand, I could convert my ellipsoid and my character and that point over to this world where my ellipsoid becomes a unit sphere, right? And that would change my guy to, right, it'd now be different shaped. It would be in there. And this point would go over here. X prime, we'll put a prime there to show that it's a different one. X primed, um, Y prime, Z prime. So that's the new point. Determining whether or not that point is inside this unit sphere is actually quite easy. I just get this distance from that point to the center. If it's bigger than one, it's not in the unit sphere. So it's really easy. So I start over here, right, in my real space where where everything looks as it should. I convert over to here where the ellipsoid becomes a unit sphere. I can do my collision detection and my response over in this world, and then I just transform back over there before I um, generate it on the screen or predict the reaction in the real world. So that's the motivation. And this type of transformation from here to here is called a change of basis, which is going to change the basis. All right? Okay. So if we're going to talk about a change of basis, let's revisit the definition of a basis. A basis is any minimal collection of vectors that span the vector space, right? So it's um, what that means that spans the vector space is that any vector in the vector space can be expressed. So any vector in the vector space can be expressed as a linear combination of my basis. And we looked at two bases in 3D, in R3 we call it. There's the standard basis, E1, E2, E3. This is E1. E2 and E3. And then we looked at another example um, basis, which had V1, V2, and V3 written here. V1, V2, and V3. And what's so nice about this new basis is that if you go back to our little example here, our radius vector for the ellipsoid was 3, 2, 4. That means 3 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, 4 in the z direction. So that's the radius vector, 3, 2, 4. Right, so 3, 2, 4 with respect to our standard basis is 3, E1 plus 2, E2 plus 4, E3. Over here with respect to our new basis, it's 1, V1 plus 1, V2 plus 1, V3. My radius vector is just 1, 1, 1. Those are the coefficients of the radius vector with respect to my new basis. Right, so essentially in this new basis, with respect to this new basis, my ellipsoid is now a unit sphere. 
All right, so let's go, let's figure out how we do one of these change of basis um, transformations. Suppose we have two different sets of basis vectors. We have A and B. The set of A will be um, denoted with U's. The set B will be denoted with V's. If we put these into matrices, you know, the, ve the basis vectors are the columns of the matrices. There's U1, U2, U3, or UN, V1, V2, all the way up to VN. They have the same number because uh, the dimension of the, of the vector space determines how many uh, vectors there are on the basis. So they have the same number of vectors. And when I say that, this, that these are bases, that means that if I have any vector in Rn, it can be written as a linear combination of the first basis vectors or a linear combination of the second basis vectors. So it can be written like this, but you wouldn't really do it that way. You take the matrix of basis vectors and you'd multiply it by a coefficient vector. Coefficient vector. And other, or you could do it uh, with respect to the second basis, where that's the matrix of basis vectors, and B are the coefficients, right? Okay, so what that means is that X, my point in three space, can be written as capital U times A, or it can be written as capital V times B. And, and so suppose we have one basis and we want to convert to another. So we'll suppose that we have A. We have the representation with, re, with respect to our first basis. So we have this. And we want to solve for this, for B. What is the representation with respect to our second basis? Well, that is very easy to do. It is multiply on the left by V inverse of both sides of this equation. And I can, I know it has an inverse because its columns form a basis. That means the determinant is non-zero. So I can take its inverse. This goes away and I just have V inverse times U times A is my new representation with respect to the new basis. Right? So B equals V inverse times U times A. And I call these first two here, the transformation matrix T. So T equals V inverse times U. All right, that's my transformation matrix. And here's the important thing. Usually one of these bases will be the standard basis. Suppose A is, and usually it's the first one, and it's, this is, suppose A is E1, E2, up to EN. Then this matrix up here for you is just, you know, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, so on, on and on to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, All right? Specifically, that matrix of basis vectors is the identity matrix for Rn. And what that means is my transformation matrix V inverse times U is just V inverse because this is the identity matrix. All right? And the other important thing is that this point X, this is with respect to the original basis, which is the standard basis. So that means that's just the, the point where you started, right? Because with respect to the standard basis, the coefficients of the linear combination are just the terms in X, All right? So this is really in practice how it's done. The coefficients with respect to the new basis is just the inverse of the matrix with the new basis vectors as columns times the point in R3 or R2, right? The transformation matrix is just V inverse. Okay, so I'll give you a little um, graphic of what that looks like or a little example here. Suppose I have an ellipse in R2 with radius vector 2, 3. That means I have this ellipse here, 2, 3, right? Suppose I want to convert that to a unit circle, right? Well, my new basis will be V1, which is 2, 0, 
and 0, 3. That's because that radius vector, 2, 3, will be 1 times 2, 0, plus 1 times 0, 3. So the radius vector with respect to my new basis is just 1, 1. That is a unit circle. 1, 1. OK, so how do I get that transformation matrix? Well, there's my first vector for my new basis, second vector for my new basis. I turn it into a matrix, get its inverse. There's my transformation matrix. All right, so the way I get this ellipse, you can't really just hit an ellipse with a transformation matrix. What you do is you hit every point. So suppose I have this point here, x, y in R2. And it's going to take me over to here. Oh, probably not there. I'll call that x prime, y prime. In this case, the new point is just going to be my transformation matrix, which is 1 half 0, 0, 1 third times my original point. And then I hit this point. And it'll take me to here, and then I'll hit this point, and it'll take me to there. So I'm hitting all the points. I'm not actually, you know, you don't actually hit the ellipse or the ellipse with the transformation. You have to hit all the points that create the ellipse. Um, and the transformation over to my unit circle space is just that V inverse. But then if I do my collision detection or response over here, and I want to get back to my standard basis, I go back by, so if T gets me there, T inverse gets me back, which is just V, that's where I started with. Right. So it's really quite simple and elegant. You just go back and forth, first with um, V inverse to get myself into the unit circle world, and then V to get me back, where this is just V right here. All right, so, and the nice thing about this is that any point that is inside the ellipse will remain inside the unit circle and vice versa. If you're on the ellipse, obviously you'll end up on the circle. If you're outside of the ellipse, you'll end up outside of the circle. And so I have some MATLAB code that does this and generates these two graphs. Uh, the difference between this example and the one above it is that this ellipse actually has radius vector 2, 4 instead of 2, 3. So my basis will be, um, my new basis will be 2, 0, and 0, 4. All right, that'll be V1 and V2. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, and the code's on the next page. I'll go to that in a second. I'm going to plot, create that ellipse, plot the, the ellipse in those three points. I'm going to hit it with the transformation, and then I'm going to plot the ellipse after it's been transformed and the three points after they have been transformed. Um, and this is the file ellipse transform.m. It is on, in the chapter one program repository. I recommend that you open that up and you can just run it and then you can play with it if you'd like. So you should open this up and run it and when you get done running it, it will produce these two graphs. So I'm just going to give a quick overview of what this code does. So this right here is going to create my ellipse. That's the ellipse. It has 2x radius, 4y radius. So I start off with t, which is my parameter that goes from 0 to 2 pi. So it's going to go the whole way around once. x is going to be 2 times the cosine of t. y is going to be 4 times the sine of t. So that creates my ellipse with x radius 2, y radius 4. This is that point inside the ellipse. This is that point outside of the ellipse. And this is that point on the ellipse found when t is just 1. All right. I create my first plot with this subplot command 1, 2, 1. That's, the, that's one row, two columns, first figure. That's how the subplot command works. Here I'm just plotting x, y. That gives me the ellipse. This gives me that first point, second point, third point. I use axis equal, so my circles look like a circle. This gives me the axis of the graphs, a title, and some x and y labels. 
So here's the transformation. So now I want to get, um, I want to transform my ellipse into a unit circle. So there is my matrix V, which looks like this, two, zero, zero, four. There's my first basis vector. There's my second, right? The transformation is just the inverse. The transformation matrix is just the inverse of V. And so now this process here is transforming every single point on the ellipse. In other words, I'm taking my transformation matrix T and I'm multiplying it by X1, Y1, X2, Y2, on and on and on, X100 to Y100. So that's what this is doing right here. So Because that's the X vector, Y vector, that semicolon puts them in a new row. But what that gives me is my X1 prime, Y1 prime, X2 prime, Y2 prime, and so on. And so what I want to do is I peel off this, the X's right here. So those are the X's of my new um, ellipse, which is now actually the unit circle. There are my Y values. It's just the second row. Uh, there's that first point after it's been transformed second point, third point, and then I create another subplot, one row, two columns, second column. Right. There's my new ellipse, which is now a unit circle, um, first point, second point, third point. So it's really easy. It takes, you just get your new basis, create a basis vector, which we call V, 0, 4, and then V inverse is the transformation matrix. And that's what gets you from here, where I have an ellipse, to here, where my ellipse becomes a unit circle. And notice, if, if you have a collision over here, it results in a collision over here. And then if you need to go back, means if you found the collision occurred, that means it must have occurred over here. All right? So it's a great transformation for doing collision detection and actually collision response. And I believe that wraps up chapter 1.6. So I suspect I will see you. Yeah, that's all. I suspect I will see you or I hope to see you in chapter 1.7. Uh, bye now.